In this video, I'm going to cover all the selection tools in Adobe Illustrator that you may not know about. <laughs> So it turns out there are a ton of different ways that you can differentiate a bunch of different elements in Adobe Illustrator. I'm a wedding invitation designer, so I have an invitation pulled up and I'll kind of show you how I think about it. So a lot of people might use layers and for instance, you could put all the text on one layer and then all the colorful like background elements on a different layer. You could put each individual piece on one layer. There's a lot of different ways in which layers can be helpful in Illustrator. I personally choose not to use layers because there are so many other ways to select things that I find it really easy to do them even if they're on one layer. Now, if I'm doing something that I need to turn off a bunch of elements and turn them back on over time, then I'll definitely use layers or if it gets really complicated, I'll use layers. Um, but it turns out there's a lot of ways you can differentiate things without even using layers. First and foremost, we have our selection tool, which is this one right here. It's going to be your default mouse, and you can also press V to get that as a keyboard shortcut. This is your classic selection. You can just select basically an entire shape or a text box or whatever it is that you need to select. You can add a stroke, take away a stroke, change the color, do so many different things here. This is basically just your classic selection tool. Now you can also use your direct selection, which is A on a keyboard shortcut, and that's going to select more of the path and the anchor points that are making up the shape. Uh, so if you try to direct selection a block of text, it's not going to work quite as well. But using the direct selection tool on a shape of any sort is going to give you all of those different anchor points. And you have the ability to delete them or um, get rid of them. You have the option to change them from, you know, corner to rounded. You can also move them and change what their shapes look like. So this is kind of the core of Illustrator is that you have all those different anchor points and you can use the direct selection tool to edit them individually. Now your magic wand tool you might be more familiar with in Photoshop. It's going to select tools, objects with similar appearance. Um, so if I try to select this one, it's also going to select this one because it's also wavy and a similar color. The pink one is not similar enough for some reason. Um, but this can be really helpful with, you know, if you're trying to select something that's within a group of a lot of similar shades, similar shapes, etc. And then we also have our lasso tool, which is going to allow you to kind of draw a line around anything that you want to select. So I've selected all of those anchor points and you can move them, get rid of them, etc. And then the only one hiding over here is this group selection tool. So this will select everything by group. Um, that's really helpful if you use a lot of grouping and ungrouping. But in general, the direct selection tool is really popular. So I'm going to use that most often. You actually have this entire select drop down as well. So let's use it and see what we can do. Let's do all on active artboard. That's going to select everything on this artboard. Love that. I can see a million uses for that. We also are going to have the deselect option, which is just shift control A. You can also just click off anywhere to deselect, which is great. Um, and then just in case you don't know, you can also like draw around anything that you want to select. And in general, anything that you touch. So even if I don't select the entire yellow bu bubble because I'm getting part of it, it will select that yellow bubble. Then you can do inverse, which will basically select everything except what's already selected. Yay, beautiful, so many uses for that. And then you can do reselect or control six, which I actually love this because if you go through and try to make any kind of big selection and then you're like, wait, I needed to do something else. So I accidentally clicked out of it. Um, you can click control six and it will reselect whatever else it was you had. As with a lot of programs, you can use control A to select everything as well. That is only going to select what's on the active layer. So that's another area where layers could come in handy. And then you can do like next object above or next object below. So the next object below this is going to be um, this particular one. And then next object above that is going to go back to those pieces. This is, can be really helpful if you have a lot of things stacked in certain order. For instance, these um, this like white shape which is on top of this orange shape, that could be a really helpful one. And then I absolutely love the select same panel because there's so many options here. I'm not going to show you every single one, um, but appearance would be anything with the same opacity, 
um, fill and stroke color, blending mode, fill color, opacity, stroke color, stroke weight. There's just so many different options. And then with text, you have even more options. So same font family, font family and style, um, text fill color, etc. And these can be so helpful. One thing is if you have different font families in the same text box, it can get a little confusing. So it's not always going to know which of these font families you're talking about. It's probably going to default to that top one. Let's just see. Font family. Yeah, it actually just got confused there. <laughs> it kind of selected nothing. Whereas if I do this one, same font family, it knows what we're doing because we have a few text boxes that only have that font family in them. And if you go into object, I have a couple of my favorites. So anything with a brush stroke, you can just select the brush strokes. That's so helpful if you just need to change all the brush stroke colors. Um, anything that's a clipping mask. Um, stray points is really helpful. So before I'm going to send anything to print, if I've been building stuff in Illustrator, I often will select those stray points and just get rid of them. And then another favorite that I have is all text objects. I actually set this up to control T as a keyboard shortcut that I did custom because I just always am going to select all my text objects and use this to create outlines before I send anything to print. So I love being able to just click control T and just go select all the text. Another great use of this is if you want to select the inverse of this. So control T is all of your text and then you can just use inverse to select basically everything that isn't text. So these are some options that I use all the time in imitation design. And then lastly, something that's cool is if I have a specific selection that I make that I might need in future. So say we need everything on this page plus this envelope liner, I can actually save this selection as, you know, invite plus liner. Okay. And if I ever need that in the future, I can just go in here and in this document, I will have that selection saved. So if you ever do anything really complex and you might want to select those objects together again, you can absolutely do that just by saving that selection. So I think as designers, we are kind of constantly told to use layers and stuff, but if you're not doing something that's very complex, there's so many ways to select and use different objects here in Illustrator that I don't even find I need to use layers a lot of the time. I feel like some of you guys, real graphic designers are going to judge me for that. And that's completely okay. If I were ever like turning all of these colorful pieces on and off, if I were moving things around a lot, if the order was extremely important or there were just hundreds of objects in here, then I would definitely start to employ layers. However, with all these options, it's so easy to just select all the text or even go up here and select the inverse of this, or it's so easy to select everything that's on one artboard. Um, so Illustrator gives you so many good options that sometimes you just don't even need to use layers in order to be able to differentiate between different types of objects. So let me know what else you want to discover about Illustrator. I'm going to link a free Adobe Illustrator course for beginners that I have in the description of this video. And if you're interested in learning more about graphic design, wedding invitation design specifically, definitely stick around on my channel because you'll find so many helpful videos. Thanks everyone.